Welcome to Growing with the Woodpile. Today is a sewing tutorial. I botched footprints in the garden on how to measure a grow bag and step-by-step do-it-yourself project. Went ahead and set up out here because the landscaping fabric I bought is six feet long. And I am going to be attempting to make a fabric pot about this size. And if you watch your tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and say that's 18 inches, my diameter across is 24. If you follow her step by step in there, she will walk you through on how to do it. But that is what I'm going to be attempting to do. I'll go ahead and film also what I'm doing to reenact hers. There is a second video I watched. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. And I'm going to try to make theirs and then see which one is easier. But first things first, got to cut the fabric and sew it. They didn't say anything about doubling it up. Um, I bought this at Sprinkler World. It is a 20 year guarantee weed cloth barrier. Um, and it was less expensive than the ones at Home Depot. And it came longer. But I do think, just for stability's sake, if we come over here and look at the two fabric pots I have, it's almost like a felt material and it's thicker. So I'm thinking about going ahead and doubling it up um, just because I have a lot of it and feel like it'll be probably worthwhile. All right, on to sewing. Okay, this is the white tub. It's 18 inches, 24 inches, 18 inches. So she said the length is these three measurements plus one is 61. Now she calls it the width is the diameter which is 24 plus another half is 24 plus 12 is 36 plus one for seam allowance is 37. I want to double the double up the fabric so what I did over here yes garden kitty is uh, 37 is how it was my measurement. So 37, 37 is 74. So I took my tape measure and laid it out the fabric until it was 74. Really, it was 74. Now I'm going to draw. I drew little hash marks there, there, and there. And now I'm going to take a 2x4, line up my marks, draw the line, and cut. Okay, before I cut, this measurement right here, the 61, I have decided to call an audible, and because 61 would end here, but then leave me this much fabric. And I'm like, I want a little extra, my pot will just be bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it, make one, as you see I got a whole row of it, and see if that extra inches makes any difference. So I'm going to go with that. See how it goes. All right, got my fabric all cut. Now you probably won't be able to see this on video, but this is a shiny side and this is a smooth side from my research on the internet. Supposedly the shiny side doesn't let water go out as much even though it's still breathable. Because I'm doubling it up, it's not really going to matter. If I wasn't, I would probably put this shiny side on the outside so it would go through the fabric easier. Um, I'll probably make one and see how well it drains out. 
All right, I am not a seamstress by any means. And I'm also, mm, let's say I don't have patience for sewing. I don't like pinning. Because I doubled up the fabric and I didn't want to cut it and make two layers by just folding it over. So I'm just lining up the sides, pulling it taut, and then I'm going to sew. I'm going to start at this end, so if there's extra down here, that's okay. Just a fabric pot, not making a wedding dress. This is my old white sewing machine. Um, I have made lots of Levi blankets on here for my children. So she said half an inch seam allowance, so that would be a half an inch, but doesn't really matter because I'm just going to make sure the same the seam allowance is the same on both sides because I've already altered her measurements a little bit. So I'm just going to do about a half inch on each side. This old sewing machine doesn't have marks. I have a piece of tape when I was doing my Levi blankets. So I'm going to go forward, then back it up, and go forward again, and then I'm just going to go all the way down. Coming to the end, forward, backwards. I do that just because my, I don't know how many years ago I went to high school, I did take home economics and I did take a sewing class. So here's my seam allowance. I probably could have not gone that big, but that's okay because I already had extra fabric. Um, so I did one side, now I'm going to flip it over. Sew up the other side. Pull it taut. Start down at the folded end. Um, line it up. Because in sewing, these edges that are already cut, that came cut from the, the, the store or the manufacturer, I think they call those salvage edges. And since I didn't cut it, I know it's a straight line. So I know if it's lined up straight, then, then we're doing pretty good. Didn't really want to buy the six foot roll, but since I was at, it's more of a supply place for landscapers. No, I mean, it's open to the public, but mostly, like, landscaping businesses go there. That's all they do is sprinklers and, and some other tool products and fabric, weed barrier fabric. They only had it at this size. I really only wanted a four foot. When I did the math, um, if I did four foot, then, anyways, I ended up getting a six foot, and that's okay. Um... I will probably reach out to Cousin Vicky, see if she wants some pots, and I always split seeds and stuff with her, so it cuts down on cost, and I paid, let's see, $137 for a 300 foot roll, and $2 for the string. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say it's going to be about $5 per pot that I make. So. And she has a uh, flood irrigation. And since this is weed barrier, and we were so concerned about if she planted something in the ground and the seeds coming up if she grows in a weed barrier cloth that might be the solution to her problem all right so i'm just going to leave the needle down in and now turn it to this last edge and Actually, I'm going to move over just a little bit because it's not exactly at what I have defined as my seam allowance. Line it up. 
Okay, I got it all sewed up. <laughs> Don't look at that spot. I was um, watching YouTube video, went astray, had to back it up, go straight again. So, like I said, I folded the fabric in half instead of, of cutting two and then sewing it together. So now I'm just kind of pushing the fabric down. Luckily, this fabric does kind of stay pinched. So I'm going to now lay the fabric out, bring the top edges together like this, and then lay it down flat and kind of push, push the fabric back. So, and then over to the sides. And then in her video, she sews this side and this side together. All right, let's do that. Okay, sew it up each side. The bottom is the fold. And then this is the top. And just for added strength, she goes ahead and folds this over and then sews it again. Um, and I think I'll go ahead and do that just so there's not these raw edges because I did put two fabrics together. And I'm still not gonna pin. Again, I, I don't like pinning. Um, so I'm going to fold it over where my seam is and then and then sew it. So I'm using the seam as my guideline. Again, not making a wedding dress, so nothing needs to be that precise. Okay, now if you're watching her video, what she does next is she stands the bag up. This bag is too big, so watch her video. But she lays it down and she makes it a point or a triangle right in here she makes it a triangle so I had with the seam out like this I had a hard time getting it to lay flat so and I think it's because mine is much bigger than hers I actually already as you see did the other side but I had to fold it over this way and she takes the diameter which my diameter is 24 inches and I kind of lined my seams up when I did this the points and this seam and kind of flattened it out it was it's just it's, I think it's so much bigger than hers that that's why I had an issue and then 24 inches 24 inches is there and I drew a line No, okay, kind of my caddy was there. We'll draw that part of the line. And I don't necessarily like to pin. And I did pin, looking for my, this, because this is no puncture weed barrier, it's hard to get the pins in. And I had a thimble because it was hurting my thumb. I don't know where my thimble went. But I'm just pinning it just because I don't want this part to move. And it's hard to push in, so I actually was using the fabric to help me push it. And I only did four pins. And then I did one here, here, and here, and then I'm going to sew it. Okay, I got both sides sewed. And it's inside out. Now going to flip it right side out and 
There we go. So I guess we won't really know until we fill it with dirt. Okay, now I'm going to make grow your hair looms grow bags. Now this is his tutorial, I think it's like a one gallon pot. If you go to his website, he has different pots, but he doesn't have a 20 gallon pot. And I really thought I needed a 20, about a 25, but he has dimensions for a 30. He has another video explaining the math, but that hurt my head. So those pots over there, the white ones, they were 25 gallon water drums, sorry, correction, 50 gallon water drums. I cut in half, so I'm assuming they're about 25 gallons. So I'm going to make his 30 gallon pot. And his dimensions for the 30 gallon pot is 61 by 49. And since I'm doubling the fabric, it's 49 times two is 98. Cause I will fold it over like I did on the other tutorial. And I went ahead and just drew the line marks and I am gonna just do his direction. So I am gonna cut off that little fabric there and maybe I can make little um, pots to go. Like I donate a lot of herbs and stuff. So maybe I can make little little tiny pots to donate because it's sometimes hard to find those. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and sew it up. So I have completed the bag and the instructions um, that he he did and, and unlike the first video this was the bottom but on his this is the bottom here. I'm not sure that that matters. Uh, what I did like about his video you can see how not straight my stitch is when I get going fast, is my machine and his machine does not do a double stitch. So he recommended doing a double stitch and yeah, it takes time, but plant ripping, I mean the bag ripping once it's in the garden would be kind of hard. So after watching the first video of his, I was very confused because he's doing a one gallon pot and I'm doing his 30 gallon pot. And when he does the corners, he, he says, you know, three inch, three inch little square and I'm like but mine's a much bigger pot I went ahead and watched his second video um, but it's funny though because I went to his website I'm like oh that's the diameter of 24 then if he the diameter of the small one is six and he did that by half a three and three and so I was actually surprised at my math skills so I decided I was gonna do a 12 inch square anyways um, but I in the playlist here I did link his um, his second one on I still don't quite understand his dimensions, um, but his square um, was half the diameter. I'm holding the camera with my hand, so this might be a little hard. So this is the bottom. He um, lines up, does like a little dash to make 12. I might have to put this back on the tripod. A little dash that's 12 and then this way flip the ruler 12 and then 12 so then I'm just gonna draw a line and then do that to the other side and like the first video when you make those little triangles then you should be able to see the lines a little bit easier all right, so I'm gonna mark this and then we'll, we'll see if we can line up my triangles. All right, got my two triangles lined up. I don't know why this bag seems so much taller. That's me a little concerned. Okay, I'm gonna do this side first. Uh, I wonder if we did the triangles on both sides and then, then it lined it up. Yeah, he did it on both sides so then he could line up his marks. Yeah. That's a tall... That's a, that's a tall bag. Oh, I don't know if I like that. It is what it is. Alright, so I need to draw the lines on the other side. It's gonna be maybe I don't know. trust in the process. Draw my other lines, I'll be back. Okay, 
got my lines now on both sides. I'm just lining up the two points. exactly there then the point off over here kind of pops out so I'm gonna pin that it's the only thing I pin on these this is the one I just made that's his and then this was the lettuce and uh, there's quite a bit of a difference there and I don't know if I read it wrong, his, but I measured it out. So I think I'm going to need to fill that one up with dirt to see when I fill that one up with dirt what's going on. Because I'm afraid to fill that one up with dirt, honestly. That's a lot of dirt. Well, they're all a lot of dirt. But I don't understand why that one is so much taller. The This has a bigger bottom. I feel like compared to this bottom. Eh. Don't know. Hmm. All I gotta say, hmm. Whoops. We're not making a wedding dress, are we? Alright, got it all filled up. Need a little bit more dirt. Then I'm going to have to mix more. I do need to do a own video on that. But basically, Google Melmethal Mills. Raised bed mix. I'm going to do the other one. I am a little nervous. It, uh, it, it's over there in that corner. It's the collar. So I'm going to put it there. So it's the corner. But let's do this. So I started filling this one at the leaves in the bottom, and it's starting to take shape. And that is just way too tall. I don't even know what I'd use it for. I mean, that's three feet. So before I go much further, this isn't wet. It's just leaves in there. I'm gonna dump it out. I'm gonna cut it down that there. It's about a foot. Yeah, it's about a foot. Alright, and then I will double check my dimensions and see if I just did it wrong, but I just don't want it this tall. Okay, we got soil in both bags. So this is the first bag, this is the one that was the female on YouTube that can't think of her name right now. And I need to go back and put more soil in it. I want to fill it up to the very top because there is stuff that's going to break down at the bottom. I just want the soil completely full because it's going to fall. It's going to fall. Now, this one looks good. For some reason you think I would put the seam towards the back, but I didn't. I did cut off. 12 inches, packed it up. It's not a bad little planter. Um, I should measure the diameter 
on both of those. Let me grab my measuring tape. And I'm going to go back and review my measurements and look at his website to see if I made a mistake in my math. That is a good possibility. Now this one should be 24 inches, roughly. So 21 that way, depends on which way the seam is, where it hits. So yeah, this one's roughly 24 inches. Now this one kept its shape better. Now this one's 21 inches that way and about 18. So I have several more I'm gonna make, but I think I am gonna go ahead and use this pattern. I like it a little bit rounder, although I don't know once I get more dirt if that will fill out more at the top. Got a little windy outside, but I just wanted to wrap up this video um, of things I've learned by growing or making both bags. This was growing in the garden, um, or no, I'm sorry, her name of her channel is Footpits in the Garden. And his was growing your own heirlooms. And the two things I learned is I really like how you could take any pot and she would show you how to make it. Um, I didn't really understand his math. I'm, maybe someone else would. But the thing I really liked about his was he, he like made me learn that I should double stitch. Um, you know, all the amount of work that you go into it, just put in a double stitch. And whereas hers, um, the fabric in the inside, where she just folded these over. I don't know if I showed it when in the video is he actually cut out that extra fabric instead of folding it over. Um, and that way you can make other little pots. Uh, let me show you, I made um, these little pots out of the extras that was in there. Is with this extra fabric, I made extra pots. And you can actually see this little, this little baby pot down here, way, way down in there, you can see the folds. Um, and so that was the big fold in this big pot that I cut out. And then I could use it to make these other little pots from that material. Um, see, this one has it too. This, these little flaps in here, he cuts that out of his. And why not? Because you could just use that fabric and other things. But I do recommend um, doing them. I think if I did my math correctly, um, for 300 feet, uh, it's 45 cents a foot, and it took me six feet to make the big ones. So that was 250 something, and then with the cost of the thread was I think like three dollars. And so even if I didn't use a whole roll of thread, hypothetically this is like you know five. To six dollars to make because um, I got free labor out of myself but <laughs> um, I did do nine bags and I'm gonna over here these red buckets put four bags there put a couple more bags throughout that's when it grows squash and some uh, Kajari melons and other things but thank you for tuning in try to make the bags uh, watch the video several times you see the mistakes I made but thank you for learning and growing with the woodpile and like he says, you're not making a wedding dress.